I said, Jason, can we pull this off this side? I said, in fact, the Lord told me, get Lydia. <laughs>
that I want us to do as a congregation that I believe that's it's going to be acceptable to God. If the willingness is there, I want to lift up our praise ministry, our prayer ministry. In 2022, y'all, they was on the telephone every single day. Spirit. Yes, Lord. 
all that they have poured back out for you, God, you pour back into them. How you minister to my heart. So, Father, I thank you for this calendar year that we get to, 2023. Thank you for the workers, Jesus Church, you group, everyone who has diligently made themselves available for your kingdom. We acknowledge that. We thank you, God, for being so good. Open up our hearts and give our minds to your vision. Your vision, not Pastor Roberts. Your vision for your church. And I pray that, God, that you will speak to our hearts and that you, Father, will do all that we need to bring us to a place that we will respond accordingly. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our children's church working you are dismissed at children's church six thirty below. You're dismissed. Amen. Amen. Our kids go ahead and enjoy your church time.
hundred. Mm. That's just the what? That's just the way it is. And I found out for myself. When you finally allow the word to convert you, it won't smell like you. Mm. <laughs> it won't walk with God with goodies on. Let the word convert us. Let's not be fashioned in ourselves. Let us not convert them to us. Let his do the converting to him. Mm. Y'all say amen. 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 Preach. So as we look at this, we're going to be looking at Thrive 2023 by the principles of keeping it simple science. Yeah, right, 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 right. We're just not going to be rocket science. As we love God, we're going to love people, and we're going to love to serve. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a biblical principle. And it's all wrapped up in God's vision. How he set it up alone. And as he did that, he showed us how to love him. I want you to write these passages down so you go back and read these passages because this is going to be a the platform for which we do what we do. You know, loving God, the son of David says, when he was in the desert, he said, You are, he said, You God are my God. Earnestly I seek you, I thirst for you, my whole being long for you in the dry and perched land where there's no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary, and behold, your power and your glory. This is before he even got into the desert. Yeah. I don't know if some of you have ever been in the desert before. Yeah. Sometimes when they get to be 97 degrees in Chicago, and the humidity is up, it feels like a desert. But you can get you some water, can't you? Yep. So David says, not my situation I was in that caused me not to give you or love you. It's because of who you are. He says, man, I earnestly do something. I, I go out to you. That's what the Bible says. He goes out to No matter what the situation is. He longs for them. There's a longing that happens. Yeah. There's a longing that must happen as we look to love God the way that God wants to be loved. You're going to love people. Of course, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, 4, they say love is patient. Love is kind. God told me, stop reading so fast. <laughs> stop reading so fast. See, when I read fast, it just go over your head. But when you take your time, Amen. it does not end. It is not. It does not boast. It is not pride. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always believes, always perseveres. Love. series I've done this I've done a whole series on this before. I've done a whole series on this. Mm -hmm. And we we write the Bible and broke it down. If we just took that right there, first point at 13 point, there would be an explosion like never before in the world that we live in. Amen. That people will love God. When the people of God began to love people, there is a Domino effect in how we interact and people want that. That's that that's what converted me, honestly, was people love. Mm. To want to study the Bible. Yeah. And then of course Colossians 3, 23, 24 says, whatever, whatever you do, <laughs> whatever you do, yeah. work at it with all your heart. Living up, I, I am praying for the day that I'm totally healed so I can jump with you. <laughs> I, I, I ain't gonna figure out how to jump with you. Yeah. And, and these are the heels I got on, man, can't compare to what you got on. But I, I'm asking God for that healing jumping. I almost tried to feel my first pulse in my jump. 
make a ball. But I'm just telling you, that's a heart thing you've seen. They, they, they were worshiping from their hearts. They serve from their hearts. Now, now if, you're not, if you're not here doing rehearsal, they don't want to go there like they don't want to sound good at rehearsal to me. And I go back and all the like, Lord, please, we in here. I walk out of here, I can't take it anymore. It gives meaning, y'all. 
You just can't come in here to congregate the devil for nothing. Mm. It's a meeting that God set it all up. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a meeting, man. It's significant. He set it up. It's not for you just to go and say, I'm crossing off my list for Sunday just in case somebody asks me, did you go to church Sunday? Or, oh, 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 now I got to throw a pastor off again talking about this in person service. He know I ain't coming. I don't care how many times you said I ain't coming. You ain't listening. You didn't make me mad. Preach. This is, listen, if it's up to me, I wouldn't come to church neither. Huh. Hey, let me just tell the truth. I do what I want to do too. If it's up to me, but it's not even up to me. Man. In the summertime, my boys, guess what? They play golf on Sundays. I can't, and, 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 on, on, on my sabbatical, when I play golf on Sundays, you know what my boys say? What other people say, you want to pass? Why are you in the church? You got honored. <laughs> Well, I'm going to almost about it. That means I'm going to go to church. They rebuke me. Yeah. And they won't even get it in the church. Yeah. See? Church has meaning, y'all. Amen. God's priority of the church talks action. You just can't be a part of the church and don't be a part of this action. It, 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 what, what, the thing about talk, it is this stuff. It makes you get radical when you really understand what the church is all about. It makes you do what it was intended for God wants to do. So I read, I read some, some a couple of quotes. Was I thought, I thought this was something I, I wanted to share. And I, I don't know if it's true for any of you all, but I thought when I read it, I thought it probably I can relate to it because some conversations I've had, and I don't know if you can relate to this. See, if we're not as believers taking the significance of the church and do what it says, when it's not far from you to action, maybe these two, one of these thoughts will be real for you. It's believed that many believers live in frustration, hopelessness, and discouragement because they may not know God's purpose and his priorities for their lives related to his church. Mm. Nate, mm. are you frustrated? Do you feel hopeless and discouraged? You're trying to figure out what's going on with life? Yeah, you're Christian. I'm talking about believers. I'm not talking about other believers. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't fit in that category. Maybe this other statement would be helpful. It also believes that many believers may know it, but are choosing to ignore God's mm. purpose. Yep, right there. That's the one. Mm. You know what? I do some about it when I get ready. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. So as I was, I was as I was thinking about when I started, I started by September. Okay, God, what is it? Where are we going in 2023? What is it? What, what message should be conveyed? He said, Well, I will never stop writing. I, I never read really the Bible. Just tell me what is in the Bible, right? You, you ain't got to go around and the time and all this kind of figure this stuff. No, just just tell them, and I'm going to show you how to do it. But before I tell you this. I want you to consider these three questions. I want you to answer these questions for yourself that relates to God's church. Okay? I want you to answer these questions for yourself. What is God's vision of his people slash his church? What do you think his vision is? Yeah, yeah. Because we are his people. We are the church. What do you think his vision is for you, the church? Is it all in past the law? What do you think his vision is? See, this is something that you, you should answer that. You should think about that. Because it will change the dynamic of what you do and how you do it. When you really understand that. Number two is, what are God's expectations of his people, his church, assembling together? And what should it look like or be going on? Yeah. Now, and I'm just saying, I'm just saying, this is important. This is important. It will change your life if you can answer these questions biblically. Yeah. yeah. See, there's an anticipation that God has for his people. You know there's an anticipation you have for your household, don't you? Can I go to anybody's house besides Bridget's? <laughs> and open up your refrigerator and help myself with whatever I want, whenever I want. Can I come to any of your house without allowing you to invite me? Or at least give a notice and say, do you mind if I drop out for a second? No, 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 no. I, I can't. I, do I got any keys? 
keys to any of y'all places. <laughs> yeah. When you bring your household, because you pay your bills, you get to set it up like you want. Amen. I remember, I remember my mother told me, when you get grown, get on your oh. own. Yeah. I remember my mother told me, Andrew, that the curfew for me was when the street lights come on. Huh. I don't know if y'all know that right now. Yeah. Y'all have been born yet. Y'all huh. yeah. been born when that when those that, that was a rule. That was a that, that, we had watches when I came up as a kid. We had a watch. The watch was the street watch. And that came on, brother Larry, that means you have to come in the house. <laughs> I don't know that I don't know what's going on right now. Y'all got watches, iPhones and all that stuff. See when mama ran the household, we said, hey, you, you do what I tell you to do, or you do out of here. This is a household. This is God's household. God, God, I just want to ask you, this is God's household. The other question is, what happens when God's people in this church meets his expectations for this church? Well, what happens? Hmm. What do you think happens? What would you like to happen? I, I, I need you all to really think about these questions. I want to ask them at the bottom, of course, but I, I want you to think about that. And uh, as we look at uh, my third, well, my first resolution. The Bible tells us here, let us look at the Bible, ask people to ask all these questions. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. This is the church, the first church. Yeah, and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to work, to prayer. Everyone was filled with all many wonders and miracle signs were done by the yeah. apostles. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. You can't know what you're doing. I ain't tell you nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She had no idea. The spirits moved, speaking. Yeah. All believers were together and had everything in common. Selling the possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Mm -hmm. They broke bread in their homes. And ate together with gladness and still hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. My God, my God. Brothers and sisters, as I looked at this word and I kept looking at it, there are some things that I believe that I got away from as your leader. I take full responsibility. I will share that with you. So I want to answer some of your questions. You see and highlight some of those things, like discipleship, fellowship, worship, service, and outreach. Those are the five main things that the church was set up. God set it up where he wanted it to be set up. I've done a study series on this just last week. And the reason I did the study series on that is because God wanted his people to know that this is how the church is set up. It doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna ever change. Mm -hmm. If there's any church that's not operating this way, then I can dare to tell you there will be less fruit in the house of God. I'm not talking about numbers, guys. I'm just talking about spiritually. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, man, how do we keep this simple sight? This is how you keep it simple. So I'm trying to complicate God's word and it's already written. This is the first church. This is how the church was set up. It wasn't set up no different than this. It's how we apply what he's already set up is important. But when I realized that we all are part of the body of Christ, there can be 15,000 churches, we're part of the body of Christ, but it still got to operate like this. Amen. It don't make no difference when you go. What I realized, you can go anywhere you want to go, and I guarantee you, if the church not set up like this, then guess what? We as a body need to make some changes. Yeah. That's all. That's it. I've been trying to convert people.
shirt I want to show you right now what it is. Bottom line. His teachings. Discipleship. The Bible says they devoted themselves. They were together to fellowship, to bring the bread, spending time into prayer and worship. God set it up like this. If we want to be a part of the vision that God set and will never reset it, we got to be devoted to the teachings. The Bible says they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. That's what the Bible said. When did the apostles teach?
the leader who's supposed to lead God's church. Forgot the vision. Facebook. 
Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. I did the devotions for Rock Church. Amen. We get prayer every day for Rock Church. Amen. How many of us follow these devotions that God told me to do for the church? Now guess what the church can do? You go back on YouTube and bring dead down in the devotions. Go back and do it. It's the church. Amen. It's unreal that I'm not set up. He made you do stuff you don't want to do. But he will exalt you. He will lift you up if you do it. Yeah. What else happened? They broke bread in their homes and ate the devil with glad and sincere hearts. When we are disciples of one another, we in each other's lives, you invite each other over to your house. You go to the restaurant. You go somewhere to eat. You do a picnic. I thank God for the single ministry. What y'all did was just amazing to me. Y'all gathered together. Y'all was having camps. Y'all was having time together. Y'all was picking together. Bridge and now we came to get a word for them, a devotion for them. And they were set out there. They said, y'all just did it. Right. We can do that. I'm not the kind of pastor I tell you what you can't do. I'm the kind of pastor that encourages you to keep doing it. Huh. Amen. There's some churches that you go to, you're going to get head caught. I promise you. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. I'm so imperfect as a leader, but I realize this is not a strength. It's a marathon. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, listen, you know what you felt like when we had COVID shut down? Yes. We couldn't even, we couldn't even eat dinner together with our family members. We was yearning to have time together, people to come over our house. Now we can. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We have to. The other thing, you did, praise and God and joy to thank all the people. It's something of heaven, Sam, when you come together with the people of God. Amen. You praise them. Amen. You bless them. This is again, this is what God showed me. He showed me like this, and then how do you not praise me when the doors are open? He rapped at it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it for you until I die. Huh. Amen. So then the question is this <laughs> what happens when God's people meet his expectations for his church? Y'all want to know what happened? That huh. word, the Lord has to be now with David and those who are getting saved. Huh. That's, what yeah. That's what happens right there. Yeah. I've been trying to convert people. I've been trying to do all this stuff behind the scenes that I've never talked to God about. Feeling the responsibilities of filling the seats. Yeah. yeah, there are 966 here. Feeling responsibility. What did I say to bring people to sit down? Y'all don't understand. That's why I was going to get out That's a bad thought. It's not for me. It's not my job to fill the seats. What is about seats? I had no wrong belief. My job was to set the church up. In discipleship, fellowship, worship, outreach, and evangelism. And God will add to the faith. Another man that goes to this thing. God will do the increase, yeah. not me. Yeah. Stop yeah. looking at me. And while you stop looking at yourself yourself, just do how I set it up and I will do the rest. Yes, Christ. Hallelujah. Preach. So this is the church responsibility. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Man. Huh. I was like, thank you. Man. <laughs> That's why I'm showing this field like this. Yeah. Huh. I'm watching, I'm sitting in these seats, you got balconies, I'm watching.
I love preachers, and I'm looking at expansion of churches and all this stuff. And you know, as a pastor, you think I don't struggle with that? Huh? Yeah. I mean, huh? God said you struggle because you took your eyes off the scriptures. Tell it, Pastor. Yeah. That's why you're struggling. And let me just open up your eyes to this. You do what I tell you, and I'll bring the increase how I, see, I choose to bring. Huh. Yeah. And let me just say this too, by the way, y'all. We are a church that has no debt. And I got friends who are leaders of the church, but they're in some debt because of the type of building. That's stress. They got plenty of people. But something happened with that big old mortgage that is hard to pay. So I had to look at all that stuff and say, you know what? I missed the ball. It's about God's church. So I realized I don't have just an in person church, we have a digital church. People that y'all have never seen. People that come and support our church at different levels that you have never seen them. That they give financially that you have no idea they're giving. Huh. And yet the doors are not closed in this church. Amen. So the perspective for the body of Christ is are you ready to answer these four questions as I let you go? Here we go. This is for the body of Christ. The first question is, am I willing to give my deepest devotion to his word for the edification of his church? In other words, when I'm willing to follow the teachings of the word of God. You have to be devoted in order for God to give the increase. Am I willing to do whatever it takes to meet the needs of God's people in His church? There are needs in God's church. And those who are in need should make it known so that people can help. Amen. That's what we need. The third question, am I willing to do whatever it takes to assemble with God's people, his church, or assemble to give him praise and worship? You know, the Bible says, for the church, do not forsake the assembly of the people, of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't forsake it, meaning you, 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 can, you have to open your schedule up for times when the assembly of the people come together. We hear on Wednesdays, it's going to be prayer at 6 o'clock, it's going to be praise and worship, and the word of God is going to be a set. What's the expectations? What are you willing to do? And the fourth one is, am I really ready for God's people, his church, to grow because of your participation? Could it be that we are stopping the growth with our thoughts or with what we think our church should be ran? I believe I'm one of the reasons why the church has not grown. I was trying to figure out how to fill the seats. <laughs> I missed the whole ball right there. How do you feel? God fills the seeds. What do you want to do? We are part of the universal church, this church. Amen. So, these questions are imperative for you and I to consider. You may be saying, well, this is not. This is not what I want to hear. Me neither. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't want to hear it either. I didn't want to have to take responsibility of my lack of leadership. I see why people say, 
I don't want to make it fast. I, I understand that. But I love the fact that I'm called. Amen. Amen. Don't you mess up on your jobs? Yes. She said, hey, amen. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I got one dollar. Let me get this <laughs> Our brothers and sisters, listen to me. We understand God's church is set up and gives me which is purpose. And this priority for us that this church is set up should always prompt us to act. I need you to really go back and go back and figure this out and ask these questions with me. I'm not here to beat nobody up. That's not my job. I'm done with that. If you convict it, it's because the Holy Spirit convicted you. Conviction should change us. I told my wife this morning, one of the things that I need to consider as a resolution spiritual to do everything that God has given me in Acts 2, 42, 47. That's it. That's how I'm supposed to lead this church. This church. And everybody has a part to play. So please, go and read this for yourself. Because when the telephone rings, Because of God put on my heart to do this. I don't just be full of stuff out of the air. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. You may not want to hear what I got to say, but He told me to say it. And I can walk you through why He said it. And everything that He's told me to do, He has done a thousand. Huh. This is His church. We are His people. His name. Yeah. And for that reason, we to honor his house. Amen. Y'all be God and praise. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I'm watching by YouTube and Facebook. I want to close the service out. And I want to close this out to give you opportunity yourself. Maybe you're watching and you don't know Jesus for yourself. You're saying, hey, I want, I, want, I want to live this church life. I want to do this. I, I, that makes sense to me. You can. You know, the Bible tells us that you can be the life of Christ. Romans 10 now says, if you declare to your mouth, Jesus Lord, and you believe in the heart of God, raise your prayer to the dead, you'll be saved. Come on, get saved. Come on. It's 2023. This is a new beginnings. It's a new beginnings. Yeah, it's a new beginnings. The Bible tells us with your heart you believe and justify with your mouth and confess your faith in yourself. Come on, pray with me. So Jesus come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. I know that you are the Savior of the world and you died on the cross for me. You were buried and raised on the third day. I want to live my life according to your word. In Jesus' name. Let's begin that. I believe that God will continue to open up your heart to his word. I want you to dial us on 773-887-3267 and leave your contact. I want to speak to you. 773-887-3267. I want to invite you to come to church this Wednesday. I want you to start off praying at 6 p.m. The doors of praise and worship be open at 7. You don't want to miss it because all other saints are going to be here. And I want to talk to you about baptism. But this is a new year, new beginnings. May we celebrate life. My brothers and sisters, if you have served Rock Church, and you didn't come to church today, I want to invite you to come to church. You serve, I got something for you. I can't give it to you. I ain't gonna give nobody what I got for you. You gotta come and get it for me. I'm telling you straight up, I gotta give it to you. So I hope to see you Wednesday. I 
Praise God for each and every one of you watching. May God's blessings be upon you as you consider to give your gift this morning. Go to rockabotsalvation.com, hit the donate button. Give your gift this morning. Your task in Jesus' name. God's people say amen. 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 God bless you.